Hi everybody, I'm Marcy Sprecher. And I'm Brad Richardson, and we're here to introduce one of our great friends tonight, who is doing amazing work across the community. And in this talk, you're getting an opportunity to see the roots of that work. What she has to say tonight will definitely matter. So, let's introduce her. Everybody, this is our great Beth. Whoa, family friendly. Oh, this is our amazing friend, Jenny Thompson. So many of you here know, and some of you may not, that when I graduated from high school, I thought I was going to be a youth pastor. Now, if you're going to be a youth pastor in the early 2000s, you had to be able to play the guitar. <laughs> I didn't play instruments growing up, except for maybe the recorder. So when I got to college, I knew I needed to pick it up. And I spent every moment that I could borrowing my roommate's guitar, practicing as much as possible. And by December of that year, I bought my very first guitar. And I started playing music and writing my own songs. Now, my first songs were probably a bit underwhelming. But in the fall of 2003, on the two-year anniversary of 9-11, I ended up writing this song. Now, at first sound, you might say that that's a song about God. Or perhaps because you know me just a little bit better, you might think that there's another layer of meaning having to do with my birth father. Both are true. But there's another deeper layer of meaning about this song as well. It's a song about love. Love that is joyful. Sometimes it's painful. It's a song about the power of love and its transformation. And that's the story that I want to actually share with you tonight. Love. It's a complicated word. And I think sometimes we use it too lightly. You know, the Greeks knew the complexity of the word love, and so they developed eight different words to express that complexity. Well, we have one. We say that we love Taylor Swift, or that we love Kashi, or that we love our cats, Ferdinand and Ruby. Now, I'd venture to say, with perhaps the exception of our pets, when we say we love a celebrity, or a food, or a thing, it's not the same as when we say, I love my mother, or I love my sister, or I love my partner. Now, depending on the translation of the Bible that you are reading, 
the word love is used over 500 different times. And as a high school student new to her faith, the word love and the concept held within the pages of scripture is what resonated with me the most. I craved love. Now let me be clear. I grew up in an incredibly loving home with an amazing mother who taught me how to be a badass because that's who she is. But I also wanted to fit in, to feel like I belonged, to know that I had a father who truly cared for me. And those things were missing, or so I thought. Thus began my journey of love, faith, and family, and how those things are intertwined with one another. Now, I don't want to waste too much of our time on biographical information, but let me provide you a little bit of context. Middle school was hard. I was bullied, I was called names, I even contemplated taking my own life. But it was also in middle school that I became a big sister for the first time, and she's the sister that I am the closest to. My mom, she never married my birth father, but for as long as I can remember, he had a wife, my stepmom, and I would go visit every summer or every other holiday, but our relationship just never grew. In fact, I don't think my stepmom particularly liked me very much. And when I graduated from high school, my father's true nature was shown when he decided to stop ever communicating with me. That fate was sealed when they had a daughter, my second sister. And that's when I knew I wasn't part of their family. Now they all got a little bit of context. We can go back to the story. So I found my faith around my sophomore, junior year of high school when I went to an Eastern, Eastern Washington on a Christian youth retreat, where I literally na- hammered a nail into a cross at an altar call. Dramatic, right? But honestly, that's a whole other story. With this newfound conviction in my life, I dove into scripture, and I sought as much knowledge as I could. I clung to God as my father, and I soaked up everything. Unfortunately, Like many new believers, my initial understanding of my relationship with God was rooted in law, not love. Lesson one, my first ever boyfriend, Brian Wright. Yes, for a moment, I thought I might marry Mr. Wright. (laughs) And during his senior project presentation, he decided to tell everyone that he was gay. Now, growing up in a small town like Anacortes, That's a pretty big deal. And when I heard of Brian's confession, I started asking myself, who is God and what is love? Supposedly, the Bible says that homosexuality is a sin, but how can it be a sin when coming out can cause so much pain? Brian was courageous when he came out, and I know it wasn't easy for him. He lost friends and family. Being gay wasn't just a choice for Brian. It was who he was. And how could God call something so core to your being a sin? Lesson two. I'm a camp counselor at an all-girls Christian camp called Camp Grace Stone in North Carolina. I literally lived the parent trap that summer. <laughs> Minus the twins separated at birth, but definitely with a visit across the lake to the all-boys camp. Although I had a camp, uh, although I had a cabin full of middle school students, I got to facilitate activities with all ages. And I had an older camper come up to me one day and confide in me her struggle with her identity. I listen. She tells me how important her faith is to her, yet everyone is telling her that if she thinks she's gay, something's wrong. And she doesn't know how to reconcile her state of being with what she thinks scripture might be saying. As we part ways that summer, I give her my email address so she can reach out if she wants to. She does. And all through the next year of college, I have a dialogue with this young woman. I listen, we read the Bible together, try to walk alongside her on this journey. And then she tells me, Camp Greystone won't let her be a camp counselor because she's gay. It breaks my heart. 
Now, although I won't get to talk with her much anymore, I'm happy to say that she's doing really well and has really settled into her identity. But during college and during those conversations, I continue to ask myself, what does Jesus really say about this? This idea and concept of homosexuality is not a choice, and if it's not a choice, then how do we call it a sin? Lesson number four. My incredible sister, whom I'm about 12 years older than. She's in college, and she's been grappling with a couple of things. She gives me a call. She says, Jenny, I think I'm transgender. <sighs> wow. What courage. What bravery to tell your almost youth pastor sister. My response, honestly, I paused. And then I asked some questions. And then I said, I love you. How else can I support you? You see, I'm convinced that my faith journey prepared me for that exact moment when my sister decided to share with me her true self so that I could wrap her up in love and not judgment. By the way, for any of those who are still questioning the idea of transgender identity, you don't know my sister. You don't know the transformation that she went through being uncomfortable in her own skin to embracing and loving herself. I can't explain it. I will likely fully under, never understand it. But the woman I get to call sister is the most incredible woman I know and a complete badass like our mom. And I wouldn't have it any other way. St. Augustine says this about love. Love is a temporary madness. It erupts like an earthquake and then subsides. And when it subsides, you have to make a decision. You have to work out whether your roots have become so entwined together that it is inconceivable that you should ever part because that is what love is. Love is not breathlessness. It is not excitement. It is not the permutation of promises of eternal passion. That is just being in love, which any of us can convince ourselves we are. Love itself is what is left over when being in love has burned away. And this is both an art and a fortunate accident. So, what's love got to do with it? Everything. It is the, both the greatest and the most devastating emotion that we can feel. Yet without it, we are nothing. In fact, I actually have it tattooed on my wrist so that I can never forget the power that it holds. I'm convinced that God has called us to love, to love one another, to uplift each other, to embrace the beauty of humanity. Because it's only through love that we can make this world a better place.